they, 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 they were actually being shown at the screen in pink and blue. They yes, are, yes. so are, there is no problem no. once or they are behind me. They are behind you. I will Let recognize them. I will recognize them and I will welcome them to the house. Don't worry. Will I say something before they go home? Let me do it because they are there. You know, Mr. Speaker, a girl's school. After I recognize them, you will. I know that is your school on the Bodoris Tonya. And, and, and the girls would want to, to see you uh, sit in the place they'll sit on in future. Honorable Dr. Nikal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this report. And I must start by appreciating the wisdom of uh, splitting the investment committee into the, in the three committees, one of which is looking at the sagas in, under the Ministry of Education. And uh, Mr. Speaker, may I also take this opportunity to appreciate the work that has been done by this committee. Mr. Speaker, these are sagas that for a long time we have never discussed them on the floor of this house. We don't seem to have recognized how important they are. But Mr. Speaker, if you look at these institutions, all our efforts in education will go to nothing if we do not strengthen these uh, institutions. Mr. Speaker, look at the Kenya Institute for Curriculum Development. It does not matter how much money we put in education, if the curriculum development and curriculum implementation and monitoring is not done properly, it will come to none. And who can do that other than the Institute for Curriculum Development? Mr. Speaker, look at NACOSTI, the National Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation. We are putting a lot of emphasis on STEM now. We are putting a lot of emphasis on a competence-based curriculum. But Mr. Speaker, without research that NACOSTI is leading in, all this will be of no value. Without harnessing science and technology, we are not really going anywhere even with the new curriculum. Mr. Speaker, look at uh, the, the Council for Legal Education. You are a lawyer. Without this council, Mr. Speaker, we cannot have advocates in this country practicing as they should. And Mr. Speaker, look at the Tibet Authority. We are all, uh, all emphasizing the issue of Tibet. And we have this authority that is actually to guide us on how we should develop them, how we should develop them, how we should relate them to the, our industries. And it is this authority that will do that. And we've never really discussed them here. Look at for Commission for University Education. Mr. Speaker, how will you have university education? You have universities, we say some are dying, but we never talk about Commission for University Education. It never comes before us. Even during the budget, you never really hear much of them. Mr. Speaker, look at uh, uh, COOPS. Uh, that is the Kenya Universities and Colleges uh, Central Placement Services. We are just through the process of actually placing students in universities and colleges. And it has brought out a lot of problems on how to uh, place students in which institutions. That is an extremely important uh, institution. You can look at the Kenya National Examination Council. Mr. Speaker, if we are not looking at Kenya National Examination Council, if we do not support it, if we do not make sure that it can actually uh, oversight and, and, and give uh, credible results, look at what happened before the Metiangi Magoa process, which actually told us that a large number of the students that were, that were seen to have passed, that had A's, actually had fake A's. And with that realization, when they actually streamlined, the number of students that qualified for university education went down until we have to reduce colleges. And that is why we started private colleges, which are now competing because we are now getting the correct students with the correct number of colleges. So, Mr. Sewer, these are important. Look at a uh, higher education uh, loans board. Mr. Speaker, we have all been saying that we are spending more money in private
private universities in several public universities. We had fake students and a large number for universities. Now when we have properly uh, tested students, we have fewer students. And so there's competition between the public universities and private universities. And so we now know we have to put more money in our public universities. So Mr. Speaker, these institutions are extremely important. Look at the university enterprise uh, institutions like UNES. Universities must be able to actually take part in some commercial activities, even as part of their training. And if they cannot do that, Mr. Speaker, we, we really have to support them. So Mr. Speaker, if you look at this, and there are actually 23 of them, I've only mentioned about 10, and these are institutions that before this committee was in place, the division of the invest committee into three, we never heard about them. Even when we are uh, vetting people, we never hear people coming, people, uh, their names coming here for, for, for vetting. Maybe they come, we don't show interest. And yet, they are key in our educational uh, development and actually the economy of the country, if you look at this institution. And Mr. Speaker, look at the report we are getting about them. Poor accounting standards. And we are told that sometimes when this committee was going, they were not even able to report, which means these people have not been oversighted at all. They have actually been never supervised. And we are told, Mr. Speaker, that most of their institutions are just one ethnic group depending on where they are. Obviously, if there is no oversight, proper oversight, the, 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 the CEOs will actually employ people around and see it as a, an, an, uh, an entity which they can use. Mr. Speaker, we are told that the accounting officers are ignorant of the uh, Public Finance Management Act. How can we have these such important institutions run by people who are ignorant? And how did they get those jobs? Again, it is averting. So that we have not put emphasis on these institutions. The committee has recommended training, but I think we should also look at the process of recruiting these officers. We have been told that they don't, they are not even sure of when compliance with the PFMA timelines. They don't know when to report, do accounting reports. The speaker, this is speaking volumes. That, that the institutions they have, they don't even know about the aligned titles for those institutions. And Mr. Speaker, if you look what comes out, it's actually to an extent we have neglected these institutions. And I think this committee has done a good job. Now we are told they have stalled projects. National Examination Council, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. We are talking of years when projects have not been completed and a lot of money have gone. But every year we had a public investment committee giving reports. How come this one not coming to us? Every year we have a budget process, Mr. Speaker. How come the budget process was not picking these stalled projects? We have a public accounts committee. How come these stalled projects were not being picked by these committees? To some extent, we have actually let these institutions down. And Mr. Speaker, if we do that, then all the money we are spending in education is being wasted. These are the institutions, the sagas that support the education system. And Mr. Speaker, I then realized that there are actually two main issues in my view. We actually have not oversighted them properly, and I can understand also the parent ministry. These are important sagas. They have so many. They are 20 something, and they have others. So I really can appreciate that the Ministry of Education maybe was overburdened. But now splitting the committee has brought this matter for, and we can therefore look at it. So poor funding, that was again a sign of ignorance. Poor human resource, that's a serious management issue. And uh, very many of them uh, are, are in one ministry. So uh, Mr. Speaker, I am supporting this for now, I think the report is a bit lenient. I think it has brought issues that to a large extent will not be the accounting officers, but the overall oversight capacity, even us as parliament. 
and also the minister. I know Honorable Meli in the Education Committee is a very capable person. I think he'll support these servers so that they can deliver what we need for this country. With that, Mr. Speaker, I support this report. Thank you. Honorable Robert Bui. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the committee because they have done uh, basically these audit uh, reports for 23 institutions and I'm reliably